um, sorry about that. Um, we are here tonight for the pre-competition webinar for the state's, uh, state championship for golf on Sunday. Um, I'm here with Ryan Kelsner, who you guys all know as the current uh, sports director for golf. Um, we're joined by Marty Parks, MSGA member, Steve Bennett, the senior director of sports and competition, and Mike Zarnowski, the VP of sports, both at both here at Special Olympics Maryland. Um, let's just get right into it. The agenda for tonight, obviously, welcome everybody. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, very excited for the tournament this weekend. Hopefully the weather holds out so we can have it. Um, going over some qualifying events, general state championship info, um, general competition, information, information for both skills and stroke play athletes, um, some delegation information that will help us stay organized on Sunday, um, venue maps where we can talk about what's happening at certain points of the golf course um, throughout the day, driving directions, and then if anybody has any questions towards the end, uh, we'll have time for that. Yeah, and just as a reminder, this webinar is being recorded and don't feel like you have to jot everything down. Uh, we will send out the slide deck tomorrow. Um, also, if you have any questions, please feel free to throw them in the chat. Um, and I'll try to cover them as they come in. Um, and back to you. Thank you. Um, so our qualifying events, really just want to take a second to thank all of our area and county programs for hosting the their qualifying event throughout the season. Um, whether we were able to have it and it was a success or unfortunately it got rained out, we appreciate all the effort putting into planning and scheduling those uh, qualifiers throughout the season. So getting right into um, some details for the state championship this weekend, we will have spectators. They will have sections throughout the or around the clubhouse for the skills. They'll, there will be a specific viewing area, whether you're at the driving range or over at the putting green. Um, in the past, there have been some situations where personnel has had to address family members regarding coaching or assisting, especially with the skills uh, competition. And so we want to make it very clear that the spectators and family members have to stay in their separate designated location for the whole event um, and are not allowed to really interact or coach and assist their athlete during the competition. Um, so non-delegate, non-delegation members, assisting athletes, uh, carrying bags, or family members assisting athletes with getting to proper locations um, and families getting within that 50 feet area during competition. All of those things uh, cannot happen on Sunday. Just to go off that, those spectator areas that will be set up this year are the same ones that we've used in the past. Um, we kind of started them during COVID and then found that the competition, both from an athlete aspect, um, from running it, from also a spectator viewing area, uh, the areas that we have marked for that worked really well. So that's the reason for continuing that uh, throughout the, um, at least the foreseeable future here. Couple additional notes, um, please communicate all the general information, especially the ones that directly relate to them. Um, to all of them prior to them showing up on Sunday. Um, like we said, there's going to be limited viewing areas uh, for those that have been there in the past. We know the driving range gets a little tricky um, and it may be a little trickier this year with the rain and wet grass and stuff. So we will definitely um, have those areas marked off for you um, and the parents and uh, all the spectators. Um, we talk about course play uh, on a different slide, like I mentioned, the 50 feet rule. 
Um, but it is the coach's responsibility to supervise their athletes uh, when they are uh, not in their divisions or competing. So anytime they're not in the middle of competition, um, their coach should be aware of where they are and what they're doing. Um, dates and locations, you guys know it is this Sunday and we're playing at Queenstown Harbor. Um, there's the address for anybody that needs it. Take a screenshot, write it down. Um, but like Ryan said, this is also being recorded, so you can always refer to this later. Um, tentative schedule for Sunday. The final schedule will be sent out on Friday um, with tee times and uh, skill starting locations. Um, but our tentative schedule at this point is the practice area is going to open around 7. Registration will start at 7.30. We'll get the opening ceremony go going at 8.15. Stroke play and level one, uh, or this session one for level one, will both start at 9 a.m. Um, and uh, obviously stroke play will continue. We'll have athletes teeing off at both one and 10. Um, the first groups though, in session one will be our level threes and fives playing 18. So they'll be the ones going out first. Um, we'll then have lunch around 1130, which is when our award ceremony will start to begin. And around 1230, we will get that second, uh, skills session started 1245 should be around when we get those, um, second uh tea times getting out on the course all right so just a look, easy breakdown of our levels for anybody that doesn't know level one is our skills level two is our nine hole athletes with the unified alternate shots with their partners level three is same thing but 18 holes it's the alternate shot with their partners level four is individual nine holes they go out on their own and uh, a level five is same thing individual score but for 18 holes stroke play some general competition rules um we've divisioned the athletes already and uh they have been as accurately put with players of their own skill as possible um and a, a bunch of factors went into this not only scores we obviously wanted to keep genders uh, close and age close just try and make it as compatible as possible um they may be a little bit of combination to create the best kind of competition but we tried our best to keep everything as organized as possible um general rule for not only on the golf course but during the entire event no profanity or abusive language at any time um families and spectators must remain like we I've said a couple of times, 50 foot distance, um, especially in stroke play. Um, they're not allowed to offer strategic ass assistance of any kind. So just a couple of resources here. We have the USGA website and our coaches resources page for Special Olympics Maryland uh, for golf within Special Olympics Maryland. Um, so both of those links are available to you. Uniform requirements for Sunday proper golf attire um, for all five levels. Um, violators of this dress code will be disqualified. So collared shirts or golf mock necks, um, no t-shirts, um, slacks, Bermuda shorts, golf skirts for women are required. No jeans, no sweatpants, warmups, cutoffs, basketball shorts, that kind of stuff. Um, no metal spikes are allowed, but spikeless golf shoes, sneakers, or soft spikes are all good to go. Um, and then uniforms cannot have any advertisement except for their normal brand logos. If it's a Nike shirt, obviously the swoosh will be on it and that's all right. Um, inclement weather. So this is obviously uh, important for specifically this weekend because it looks like we're going to have a decent amount of rain on saturday more than sunday so hopefully they get it out of the way early and sunday is a little bit lighter and we can get out there and play but our rain plan um actions will be announced by our golf committee um 
it won't be implemented unless there's an excess amount of rain, you know, standing water on the greens, um, just unplayable conditions really, uh, or obviously thunderstorms. Any kind of lightning will obviously stop play. Um, but we will play through just rain. If it's just rain and the course is playable, we will play. Um, athletes and partners are obviously asked to continue or keep up their pace of play through the rain and inclement weather. We understand that's a challenge. Any of us could go out and play and then playing in the rain, we're going to be slower. So it's totally understandable if you're slower, but just keeping in mind that keep we have so many golfers trying to get through so many holes in one day that pace of play is very important. Um, if lightning does occur, please re return to the clubhouse, go indoors, do not stay on the course. Um, safety is obviously our most important issue throughout the entire day. Um, so at any point, we don't want players taking cover under trees or anything like that. Head straight back to the clubhouse, go inside. Um, if no lightning is seen for 30 minutes after that initial strike, then we will continue competition. Um, it's basically a 30 minute warning from the latest lightning strike. So our current forecast for Sunday is, like I said, it sounds like most of the rain is going to be on Saturday. So it'll be a little overcast with rain at times throughout the day on Sunday. Got a high of 74, a little bit of wind, 10 to 20. But right now it's kind of going back and forth between 50 and 60% chance. So um, maybe on and off, maybe a little in the morning, more than the afternoon, um, but still a few days away. So not as accurate as possible yet. Um, definitely going to be a humid one out there, 85%. And uh, we should have plenty of sunlight to get our golfers in. Water and snacks, we'll have snacks and bottled water available for stroke play competitors to take out onto the course with them. Um, and then bottled water will also be available to all skills athletes while they're competing uh, or before and after their rounds. Uh, competitors for both skills and stroke play are encouraged to bring their own labeled water bottle as well. Um, you know, never hurts to stay as hydrated as possible and obviously keep it labeled because we have so many athletes coming out we don't want them getting mixed up. Uh, awards. They are going to hopefully be presented in the pavilion. Um, we'll have our level one golfers. Uh, they'll be called to the award staging tent following a 30 to 45 minute break for lunch uh, following their competition. That's for session one. For session two, golfers are going to have lunch before their competition lunch is available starting at 11 30 um, and, and then they will report directly to the awards area following the second session um, golfers are asked to re to be ready to report to the award staging tent when called and must remain in full competition uniforms in order to participate in the award ceremony um, so obviously that is ideal with it being very rainy and stuff like that, we'll, you know, we, we try and make exceptions if somebody's completely soaking wet and wants to put a jacket on. We're not going to uh, say that they can't do that. And just to clarify, this was a mistake on my end here. Um, I think a few different times we go back and forth between 11 and 1130 for lunch, um, since that obviously does affect the session number two skills athletes, lunch will begin to be available at 11 a.m. OK, that'll be 11. Thank you. Yep. Um, so for the stroke play athletes, uh, the golfers will be directed uh, to the award staging tent immediately after handing over their signed scorecards to the scorers tent. Um, that is also where they will receive their lunch ticket. Um, they also must remain in full uniform to participate in the award ceremony. Um, the, the ones who do not remain in the awards area may not have their awards presented to them during the official ceremony. Um, we'll get their award to them, but um, we know how special that a ceremony is to the athletes and we want them to be part of it. So um, if they could just stay in the awards area until then, that'd be great. Protest procedures. So only certified head coaches can file a protest. Um, 
protest may only be made on the application of sports rules, not on the judgment of officials. Um, so we will have USGA officials out on the course and what they say out on the course is rule. Um, those things cannot be protested. Um, but protests must be on Special Olympics protest form and must be submitted to the scorer's tent table within 30 minutes of the posting of the score um, from the division in question. The golf committee will rule on each protest. The decision of the committee may be appealed to the games rule committee. Um, and then the decision of the games rule committee is final. Um, and then you can see the members of the rules committee underneath here. Okay. The competition format and regulations for our skills competition. Um, so competition starting times, divisions, and starting stations for all athletes will be sent out to you Friday morning. Um, it will also be posted during check-in within the clubhouse. The current plan is to conduct two sessions for level one, the morning and the afternoon. Athletes are to have their clubs ready at each station when it's their turn to participate. Athletes are required to carry their own clubs to and from each station. Credentialed coaches may assist in carrying the bags, but parents may not. They still have to remain, <clears throat> excuse me, the 50 feet from competition. Coaches are not permitted to coach or assist. Um, the athlete, once he or she has addressed the ball for their first attempt at any skill station, um, they are permitted to coach and instruct their athletes in between skill stations. Um, yep. Yeah, one more thing on that slide. Casey has worked extremely hard um, both on the tee times and for the starting skill stations, and they are done much farther ahead than they typically are. And we understand uh, all the logistical pieces that go into getting your athletes there at the right time. Um, what I will say is that the female athletes will be in the morning session. Okay. Outside of that, I can't provide much more at this time, but again, we will be doing everything we can to have those to you on Thursday uh, to assist with your planning. And just to clarify that, um, although all females are currently scheduled for the morning session, there are also some males that would be combined with the females in the morning session. So um, just a clarifying statement there. Oh, correct. Um, so let's see. A couple other things for skills. Athletes uh, will compete in two full rounds of competition to earn their cumulative score for this championship. Um, they will achieve the two scores, which are 10 total attempts per skill station before moving on to the next skill station. So we don't want them doing five and then thinking they're going to the next station. They're going to complete all 10 and then move on. The skill stations are not available for use before the competition. Portions of the driving range area and practice screen may be available for athletes to utilize before the opening ceremony. So there will be marked off sections. They won't be able to use the official holes that we'll be using during competition, but there should be some space for them to warm up and practice. The opening ceremony is at what time? The opening ceremony, I believe I had 8.15. Let me check here for you. That'll be 8.15, Marty. Yep, 8.15, opening ceremony. Okay, okay. So level one check-in, um, upon arrival at Queenstown, level one session one golfers should proceed into the pavilion. Uh, staging for level one will begin at nine. Competition for level one session one will begin at 9.15. And then for session two, same thing. All golfers should go to the pavilion. Um Level one golfers competing in the second session need to make arrangements uh, to have lunch prior to the 12 o'clock staging or 1230 staging. Um, we'll have lunch, like Brian mentioned, ready to go at 11 a.m. So staging for the second session, 1230 and competition starts at 1245. Tiebreakers for 
skills competition. Should there be a tie for first place following the completion of two rounds? The following process will take place. A random skill station completed during competition will be determined, selected randomly. The golfer with the highest combined score from two rounds of competition completed at that station on the randomly selected skill station, excuse me, shall be deemed the winner of the tiebreaker. Should golfers still be tied after the first tiebreaker, the same process will be completed with another skill station until a winner is determined. If still tied after all six stations, a duplicate award will be given. Going into our stroke play check-in, when the stroke play athletes get to Queenstown, the car should pull up to the bag drop area. Golfers should take their clubs uh, take their clubs to the bag drop area where an assistant from the golf course or a volunteer will place the bag onto one of the corresponding golf carts. will will have their names on their golf carts ready to go. The golf carts are not allowed to be taken into the parking lot area to individuals' cars to get bags. That's why all bags need to be dropped off at the baggage area. Um, all golfers should then report to the check-in area located in the pavilion. And we suggest that golfers are there at least one hour prior to their posted tee time. That's to give them time to register, get warmed up, find where they need to be, um, and just be ready for their round. That's the one thing last year um, that I know there was multiple teams that had their bags in their cars and throughout the day starts to be kind of a walk to get to those. Um, I mean, the distance between the cars and the bags carts and their cars um so yeah just know and pass along that those carts cannot be moved they're in that perfect order for when people will be going out i know there was some frustration with the queenstown staff um and that was the only frustration i really saw they love having us there um we just want to be respectful of them and then uh follow what they have suggested with this approach um also please make sure that your team's name is on that bag um just so they can put it with the correct golf cart in an ideal world, you have the last name of the pairing that's going out. That would make their life super easy. Uh, just a suggestion there. Thank you. So the competition format and regulations for the stroke play, play athletes, um, similar to the skills, they've, they've been division, divisioned based on, mostly based on their average score. Obviously, there are other factors, but we wanted to create the best competition possible. So average score was the most accurate way to do that. If a 10th stroke is played without holding the shot, the team shall record a 10x and go on to the next hole. All stroke play golfers will begin competition um, at the state championship with a predetermined tee time. Anticipated 10 minute increments, there will all, there will be between 10 to 20 minutes between each tee time, depending on how many golfers are in the group before them, um, pace of play, just to keep it all uh, going smoothly throughout the day. Um, so there should be either a 10 or a 20 minute uh, increment in between each tee time. Divisions, pairings, and tee time information will be distributed by Friday. Um, like I said before, it will also be posted outside the clubhouse. Athletes and unified partners must be prepared to begin competition at least 15 minutes before their scheduled tee time. Um, so that's part of that hour that we say get there before your tee time. Um, we want you ready to go 15 minutes before your actual tea time, which means in your cart with your partner ready to go um, and not up on the driving range, getting the last few shots in. So just to keep everything running smoothly, once again, 15 minutes prior to their tea time, they should be ready to go. Athletes and unified partners who miss their tea time will be disqualified. Athletes and unified partners are asked to play ready golf at all times. So T locations, they will all be playing on the forward most T box. 
the tea box that is most commonly referred to as ladies or women's tees. Um, and there will be specific Special Olympics Maryland tee markers for each hole. They will not be using the junior or kids golf tee markers, which are typically placed farther up in the fairway. Um, examples can be seen on the next two slides. So there we have the red tee box. And here we have what would be the kids tee box about halfway down the fairway. We will be using the red tees, but we will also have, like I said, Special Olympics Maryland tee markers visible for each golfer to see. Tiebreakers for stroke play golfers. Um, should the golfers or the teams be tied for first place following competition, the process will be the team with the fewest amount of 10x scores will be deemed the winner. If the scores remain tied or there were no 10x scores, um, the tiebreaker will continue as follows. A random hole completed by all tied teams will determine will be determined via random selection. The team who scored the lowest during the competition on that particular hole will be deemed the winner. This process continues until a winner has been determined if they had tied on uh, the holes. If they tied on all the holes, a duplicate award will be presented to the, comp uh, the competitors. Uh, note a score of a 10 is deemed to be lower than a score of 10x. 10x is anything over 10. 10 is a legitimate 10. Uh, results will be posted for each competition uh, division immediately following the collection of all scorecards, and they can be found on the pavilion, or in the pavilion, excuse me. After first uh, turning in their signed scorecard at the scorer's table, the golf team should remove the bags from their cart um, and clean out all trash and personal items from the carts. They should take their bag and bring it back to the bag drop area until the conclusion of the award ceremony. So we don't want a bunch of golfers taking their bags straight off their cart and then everybody going into the parking lot. So we're placing bags right back at the bag drop area. Um, and then we want them to report immediately to the awards area, which is going to be under the pavilion. Um, in the event of severe rain, the award ceremony may be moved indoors, but I, there is limited space in the clubhouse. So we will do our best with trying to keep it uh, outdoors in the pavilion. Um, unless otherwise directed by a Special Olympics Maryland official, golfers must remain in the awards area until the awards are presented. Don't go into the clubhouse, don't go into the parking lot, all those things. Um, golfers who fail to adhere to this requirement may not have their awards presented to them during the awards ceremony. Same thing we talked about before. Um, Rules officials, USGA rule books, USGA notifications, the Special Olympics Maryland and the Special Olympics Maryland Golf Committee uh, would again like to thank the USGA rules officials who have donated their time uh, to be part of the state championship this year. Once again, um, there will be multiple officials who will be roaming the course throughout the competition. Um, if you need a ruling or have a question, please signal one of these rules officials. Um, and then if you would like to take a look at or have the rule book on hand for Sunday, it can be found at USGA.org. All right. At this time, Marty um, is not on Zoom, but he is over the phone. He is at the beach, um, but he had some topics that he wanted to touch on. So I'm going to pass it over to him uh, for now. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Brian. Uh, one situation may come up. We're going to have, I think, six officials, but it's a you know it's a big golf course. A player may have a situation where they're not sure what to do. Let's say they're not sure if they get relief from a uh, cart path or a, a area of dirt next to the cart path. So, and they can't find anybody. So they can't. They don't want to hold up the whole field. So. The procedure there is to play two balls, one in the original position 
let's say, not getting relief and another ball from a position where you get relief. Keep score with both of them and then talk it over with the committee when you get in. Does that make sense? Yep. Does anybody have any questions about that for Marty? No, Marty, sounds good. Okay. That's all I had. I mean, I think uh, um, as long, one of the important positions is the staging area. So we've had it done it in different ways, but if we could get one person to be responsible for making sure the bags are in the cart and the players are then ready to be sent down to the first team. Yeah. You know, 10 minutes ahead of time. That that's a kind of an important thing. So some volunteers have done different volunteers have done it. And that's a really important uh step. Absolutely. Yeah. We actually talked to our volunteer coordinator today and made that specific uh right. re recommendation is to have people there who are not only uh responsible but also have a little bit of golf knowledge that could help um just kind of getting one, one or two is probably enough yes exactly that's what we yeah. we thought we thought we could get maybe one for the front nine and one for the back nine that's perfect absolutely perfect okay. great hey marty not to put you on the spot with something that was not on the slide but can you touch on um playing another ball if you're not sure just... about a particular oh marty already talked about it see <laughs> all right i've oh. been told it's been covered we're set Yes. Perfect. Thank yes. you. Yep. All good. So that that's all you had, Marty? Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. Um let's see. From there, uh just a couple of rule reminders. Uh ball must be dropped um straight down from knee height. Previously it was uh shoulder height. Um, but while they're standing, they can be they can drop it from their knee. Uh, a ball, if not found, is lost within three minutes, not five minutes. And uh, flag stick, there is no penalty if a ball played hits the flag stick from anywhere, including the putting green. Right. What, one thing we should alert players to, I think, is marking their balls with a magic marker. Oh, okay, yes. Um because that happens, you know, they don't know which which ball is there. But, you know, it's not just one little dot. I use a lot of dots. I use three or four dots on a ball in a color that I, you know, try to get an off color if they can. For but sure. For sure, somebody will hit the wrong ball on something. Yes, that's something that um, should definitely be talked about on the first tee as well, between teams or opponents, whatever it is, is they should uh, – you know, acknowledge each other's ball. Hey, I'm playing a Titleist one. Hey, I'm playing a Callaway three, whatever it is. And then also to Marty's point, it is very helpful if they use marker and, you know, put their initials on it or draws a little clover for good luck, whatever it is. Right. Um, right. Those things are very helpful in identifying balls. Given that it's going to be very dewy as usual for at least the first four holes, when they're playing and perhaps rainy on top of that, has there been any consideration of changing it to lift clean in place for Sunday? Uh, we have talked, we have talked about it a little bit. We're going to obviously take it into more consideration as we get closer with the weather, um, depending on what really happens on Saturday and how the golf course plays um, lift clean in place could be um, could be the way to go on Sunday for sure, depending on course conditions. Chuck, that's about that's one of that three topics. Pretty well, and it does have Bermuda grass, so it should play pretty well. I mean, you you could do it maybe if you have one or two holes that are terrible, but that's your call. Marty, that's something that uh, the four of us with Mike yeah. Cumberpatch will also talk about on Saturday. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. We have been notified that it will most likely be cart path only Correct. Uh, at this time. Oh, that's rough. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That slows it. Right, Ryan, in case I put a note in, I mean, the, the looking at the le the slides, that the change from last yeah. year is yeah. not being able to drive our carts from um, – to our cars at the end of play to get rid of the carts.
given how long it often, I mean, I'm usually at the end, like given I, my qualifying score, my son and I's qualifying score, we have a late tea time. There'll be like an hour or two's worth of bags piling up at the bag drop area under this approach. I'm going to allow Steve and or Casey to correct me um, if I'm wrong about this. Um, so please step in immediately if that is the case. It typically takes us a little bit of time after you turn in your scorecard for us to process everything through with awards and with yeah. there being rain come in. Um, my ask would be to the team to, when you are done, you stop by very briefly, ensure that your scorecard is turned in. You then proceed your vehicle and drop off your bag. From there, please go straight to the pavilion then to wait to be awarded. That that sounds good to me, Steve. Any okay. That's objective? different from what the slide said, but I like that approach better. It is different. Yes, correct. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Well, then, yeah, we could we could definitely do that. Um, yeah, that was a great point. We didn't. Uh... And John will remind people there when they check in about that as well. Yep. For sure. There's not that much, to, I mean, just to have people be quick. I mean, I think what people have done historically is they finish the round. This is what you do when you normally play golf. You finish your round, you drive your car to your car, you get rid of your bags, and then you go do whatever you're going to do. That's everywhere. And that's pretty much been the case at our events. So, I mean, you do turn in your scorecard right away. Then you go to your car. That is the one distinction. No, John, I'm saying that you are right, and that is how okay. I would like to proceed. Uh, we will make that update before sending out the slide deck tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. A uh, couple rule reminders. Just keep going here. Obviously, we're um, repairing spike marks, ball marks, um, no metal spikes, obviously. Um, basic golf rules about no grounding your club in penalty areas. Um, you can you can ground it in a penalty area, but not in a in a uh, not in a bunker. Not in a bunker, but yes, in a penalty area. Right. Yes, that's a new rule a couple of years ago. Okay, we will change that then. Um, and you are allowed to remove loose impediments in penalty areas and bunkers. Correct. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, playing ready golf. Uh, mentioned this before, but ready golf refers to a method for golfers just to speed up play. Um, simply put, means that each golfer within a group hits when they are ready. We don't want golfers hitting, obviously, at the same time. But if you are ready to play and everybody else is aware that you are about to hit, that's when we play. We try and play as fast as possible without playing speed golf. Um rather than strictly adhering to the principle that the, you know, typical golf rule where the farthest to the hole typically takes honors. Um, ready golf takes into whoever's ready at that time and, and in a safe way, obviously. Um, let's see. So golf carts, uh, golfers must adhere to the golf rules uh, or the golf cart rules for that day. Like we mentioned with all the rain, it will most likely be cart path only. So that's what we mean by following those rules. Um, and only people with proof of a valid ID and who are at least 18 years of age are allowed to drive golf cart carts during our event. Um, spectators, like, we, like we've talked about, must be prepared to walk during the course if they're following stroke play athletes um, and they must remain 50 feet apart from the com competitors throughout the event. If there are any infractions on that end, um, the spectators will be removed from the event and the athletes may be DQ'd as a result. Um, spectators may not ride in a golf cart with the golfer or the team and uh, uh, golfers who are in breach of this rule are subject to a disqualification by the rules committee. Head coach responsibilities. Um, talked about this a little bit before, but the head coach uh, is directly responsible for the coordination and management of everybody attending from their delegation. 
Um, he or she is primarily responsible for ensuring that the competitors are at the various competition sites um, and they're properly equipped to play. Um, any problems related to a given competitor during the competition will be addressed with their head coach. Um, and each delegation will have a head coach who will attend the all sports coaches meetings. It's the responsibility of the head coach to communicate information presented in the meetings to all of the family members, the athletes, the unified partners, and other support personnel, volunteers, um, and coaches. Oops, sorry. Uh, food services. So a meal will be provided to all registered competitors, coaches, and volunteers. If competitors within your delegation require specific dietary needs, please notify the golf committee um, at the time of check-in on the day of competition. If the requirement is out of the ordinary, please make sure that that individual has made plans for their dietary needs. Um, so the lunches will include hot dog, hamburger, hot dog or hamburger, a side, side item, usually chips, something like that, and a drink. Um, and it will most likely come pre-boxed. So any athlete with dietary restrictions on any of those things, um, please have them make plans accordingly. Uh, for level one, the skills competition, meal tickets will be given to the head coach of each delegation when they check in. A 30 to 45 minute break for lunch will follow the conclusion of session one for the skills competition. Session two golfers will need to eat lunch prior to their staging report time of 12 o'clock uh, in the afternoon, noon. They must report to the staging for competition at noon. So they have to eat prior to that noon time because they need to be at staging at noon. For the stroke play competitors, they with a tee time prior to noon, um, athletes and unified partners will receive a meal ticket following them turning in their signed scorecard at the scorer's table. Teams with a tee time after 12 o'clock noon will get their meal ticket once they have also turned in their uh, scorecard to the scores table. Sorry, I'm not sure why that wasn't finished there. That's my fault. Um, all coaches and officials and volunteers will receive their meal ticket when they check in. Family services, um, there will be no family hospitality provided. Okay. So with family services, um, we will have some merch that's going to be sold over at the athlete leadership tent. That'll be by the pavilion. Um, there will be merch sold there. So feel free to stop by. Uh, we just did a big warehouse clean out. So I know we will probably have a bunch of things, um, some things you've probably never seen before. So please feel free to encourage your athletes to stop by there after they've checked in or if they have free time, along with sending some of your family members over if they're interested in merchandise. Again, when you're walking up to the pavilion, it will be to the left um, in a 10 by 10 tent. You will not miss it. All right, this is just a general map of the layout of the main part of the course where the skills competition will be going on and obviously the awards and the clubhouse and parking and all of that good stuff. Um, so you can see all of this generally labeled. So that we get into a more detailed look following here. So this is the pavilion map. You can see the big pavilion bottom right. Um, and then right next to the pavilion will be the skill station. Um, all the way to the left, you can see highlighted, that will be the spectator area for the skill station. So um, I'll be a smart ass, but the parking actually goes way off the map on a normal day. <laughs> so yes, that's one thing I did want to touch on. And then there's one more thing. Can you go back to the other picture real yep. briefly here? All right, actually, actually go back to the other one. <laughs> so with parking, we have a call with Queenstown tomorrow. Um, with the weather that's coming in, on a traditional year, there's some muddy spots where we're not allowed to park and that are blocked off. 
Parking traditionally is very crowded. We are going to figure out with them. There are some other side roads slash almost cart path looking like streets that we're going to see if we can use slash see where they suggest us to go. Um, obviously, as John said, parking does fill up quickly. We have a conversation with the head pro tomorrow morning to discuss what our options are with that. I recommend you, as someone who usually gets a later tea time, I recommend you send that out with um, the tea times where to park. There's going Whatever. to be a diagram with that, along with anything else that, well, currently I don't think there's anything we have not finalized on here outside of um, possibly awards being done in the pavilion, which is a minor detail we would not include. Stuff like that, John, we send out with the tea times, and that's usually a long email with uh, little reminders that we had not had information finalized on yet. Okay. Another thing while we're on this page, so when we are calling um, out your athletes to go to the different skill stations, the athletes that are at the chip shot, long putt, and short putt, they will all be staged out there, as will um, – the people that are going to the pitch shot, iron shot, and wood shot. So the staging for that will take place over on the putting green area. And then from there, the escorts will take their athletes to the location. For example, what we're going to do to make it as simple as possible, you as a coach have access to where your starting skill station is for each of your athletes. So please have that with you. We will also have copies to provide you on site to kind of help your athletes get to the right locations. Also, we will have these signs. Oh, you can't even see it because my screen's blurred out. Casey will show you um, on a board up a little bit higher. So on their name tag, they will have their starting skill station. It will also be, if it's the long putt, uh, highlighted in blue. So the athletes can basically head towards color coordinated uh, sections. So we found last year when we did that, it helped a little bit more than if we read your name, go to the long putt. Um, there's now multiple factors to kind of help with that. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Um, let's see. Um, so this is just the diagram of the other side where the other skill stations will be. That is uh, the driving range, the spectator area, um, the green over by the driving range will be the warm-up green for stroke play athletes. So they will not have to go and fight for space up on the main green where all the skill stations will be. They can use this green over by the um, driving range to warm up for their round. And on that map, the location, the pitch shot currently on there should be moved closer to that spectator area. There's not really a spectator area over there. It's pretty much the pitch shot and then a porta pot So spectators are welcome. We tried in the past to have chairs kind of on that far right side where you see that almost cart path piece begin by the box that says range for stroke play athletes. There will be a sign and some seating for the uh, spectators down there. They're welcome to sit there. If there are spectators that are coaching near that cart path, this was rarely the case last year. You will be warned once and then the athlete that is being coached once I am notified or Casey is notified, that is reason to disqualify the athlete from the event. Um, a couple years ago, it was not going well whatsoever. Um, last year was much better, but please know you are welcome to stand there. We will allow it, but there will be no coaching from that area once the athlete approaches the ball. It's a nice area to view uh, whatever athlete you would like, but please be respectful and allow the athlete to show off what they've learned this year. And then along with the green for stroke play athletes, there will be a few mats on the far right as a warm-up driving range for stroke play athletes. And we know it gets tight there. Please try to give everybody um, an opportunity to hit a few shots with each club um, before they tee off. Um, obviously, if you're, you have 30 minutes before your tee time and somebody has an hour, um, you should get the priority for that. I know Caprice tries to do the best job she can while also leading a skill station to kind of uh, help facilitate that. But it just comes down to being respectful of everybody up there. Once you're warmed up, um, just take your reasonable amount of time and then give somebody else an opportunity, please. So these are 
just a couple of driving directions from specific areas. If you need them, you can always come back to refer to these. Uh, a couple others from Howard and Montgomery, um, Harford, Cecil, and Easton. And now we will open it up to any questions that you all have for us. I haven't seen any further questions coming in through the chat. All right. That's because they're saving them all to ask uh, after they unmute here. They're just getting to it. Pray for sunshine. Exactly yes. Right. right. Yes. Okay. So and if we did not say it, please try to bring ponchos. Um, that could benefit you a lot. Yep. Let your golfers know, you know, about the weather and if they have rain gear or gloves or whatever they want to bring <clears throat> help them play. Um, expect some wet weather. And I think some extra towels as well to either dry off balls in between holes for stroke play, but also obviously the seats on the golf carts, et cetera, would be recommended. For sure. Thank you for that, Steve. I saw you writing it down, John. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's going to be in my car. <laughs> <laughs> mine too. Mine too. Um, not seeing any more questions. I think if uh, Casey, you want to thank everyone for everything they've done through the season and we'll call it a night. Absolutely. Last slide there. Thank you all very much for everything that you've done this season. Um, we're really looking forward to having you all out on Sunday and hopefully we get a full day of competition and fun. Um, and, uh, thank you again. Re we really do appreciate it. Yep. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Good night, everybody. Yeah. Um, thank you. Hey. hey, Casey and Ryan, um, I'm going to give you a quick call just to talk about something real quick. That Sounds good. good. Good job though. Appreciate it, everyone. Have a good night. Thank good you night. all. Good night. Marty, you still there?